I've been in a horrible 33 year dysfunctional codependent relationship with food. see you guys um, I'm gonna give you like a short rundown of where I've been um, first I want to say thank you to um, everybody who's watched the videos and made comments and I'm gonna try to get to replying to some comments but just know that I see them and I read them and I greatly appreciate them I just <laughs> my life is so fucked up right now <laughs> I don't even know which way I'm going to make a really long story short my entire life was stolen from me on January 27th, 2020. And there's not one square inch of my life that it has not touched. This is literally the first time since that day that I have had the comfort, privacy, and time to sit down and make a video without feeling like I have to censor every word that comes out of my mouth because someone's listening. So my father-in-law passed away January 27th from COVID. My mother-in-law who has um, early onset dementia. Anyways, my mother-in-law um, moved in with me. So now I have two elderly women that I take care of. And with her moving in, we had to move our three youngest sons down in the basement with my oldest son to make room for grandma upstairs. So we had to hire a contractor to come in and build another bedroom in the basement and a half bath in the basement. So the contractor was a nightmare. The process took, um, was supposed to take three to four weeks. It took three months and in the process, my son, a few days after my mother-in-law moved in, when our life was completely turned upside down, my 21-year-old son moved in his girlfriend, kind of without my permission. And it's possible with the mindset that I had that I may not have actually said no, but I don't recall ever saying, yeah, she can live here. Anyways, so, they had been together for almost a year, and once she moved in, all of a sudden their relationship changed like that overnight. Um, they started fighting, and the fighting started getting really bad, and then they left to go to her house during construction, and everything was nice and peaceful on that front, and when they came back as soon as construction was over, um, the fighting went full tilt. Um, really bad and in the middle of all of that I had a rotator cuff repair surgery on like literally the last day that California was open um, I think I, I had surgery on St. Patrick's Day and two days later the world shut down and that made things really difficult for me um, on the recovery part, mainly because I was stuck in hell 
This is one of my favorite places to record a video right here is in my backyard. Unfortunately, every time I try to do a video, there's someone doing yard work down the street. I'm sure you can hear it, but so right here, right here behind me, that's a window to my son's room. And his girlfriend would never leave. And they can hear me right there. And I just don't feel comfortable filming a video when anybody's listening, when anyone can hear me. And trying to find a quiet, private place in this chaotic mess was really difficult. Um, and I also just didn't have time trying to heal in the process. My husband's grieving caused him to kind of become a different person, not a bad person, um, just someone I wasn't used to. And so I feel like in, in these last few months, I lost my sanity, my privacy, my son, my husband, my best friend, because I couldn't, with COVID, I couldn't go and see her. And we used to hang out all the time. And now we, I'm sad. Um, I, even if I wanted, if I could get out of here, there's nowhere to go. Where, where are you going to go in the middle of a COVID shutdown, right? So, during all of this, um, somewhere right before I had my surgery, things had kind of gotten in that almost two months. I had put some weight back on. I got back up to like, because the lowest I had been was 162. I got back up to 174 last summer. In July, I did an all liquid diet and um, I got back down to 159, but bounced right back up to 162 from that. Hovered around there for a while. Then I bounced up to 168 right before my surgery. And I was like, no, I'm not doing this again. Um, but I was having surgery. So anyways, I'm down to 163 and my goal weight is somewhere between 135 and 145. So theoretically I have 20 to 30 pounds more to lose. I think 20 is more realistic. I think 145 is about as realistic as it's going to get. And I found myself having to really, really examine my mental health, how I structure my life, how I live my life on a day-to-day -day basis, and, um, and try to just like compartmentalize things and like really try to say, you know, in this chaotic situation, you know, what part of my life belongs in what box and how, and how do I deal with it? So I tried to find boxes that this is how I'm going to deal with stuff, crap. This is how I'm going to deal with crap that goes in this box. And this is how I'm going to deal with crap that goes in this box. And no matter what box I'm talking about, eating isn't one of the the solutions and that is really fucking hard so here's some things that I can tell you like for sure um what it's gonna be like after having weight loss surgery your life is if it's shitty now it's gonna stay shitty and if it's good it just might get shitty because it might not be as good as you think it is once you remove food from your uh, list of coping mechanisms um, there are going to be days, um, a lot of days, where you're going to wake up and you're going to want to quit. Um, you're going to think, another day? Really? Another day? I just want a break today. Can I just have a break today? Just today? Can I, ha can I just get away from this today? 
can today be one day that I don't have to worry about what I put in my mouth, that I don't have to worry about this or that or whatever. Can I get a break for just one day? Um, and then you're gonna, you're gonna take those days, whether you should or not. You're gonna take um, one bite that you shouldn't take. You're gonna make one little compromise. And um, the problem is, is that one day, one bite, one compromise, it snowballs into platefuls and weeks and an entire life compromised. And your success will be compromised. Your happiness is compromised. Your health is compromised. And um, your hopes, your dreams, your self-worth, your self-respect, compromised. And it is a struggle every fucking day for the rest of your life. Um, you are going to be dieting every day for the rest of your life. And if you take a day off, you won't be taking a pound off. That's for sure. You are going to have to do the hard work every single day. You don't get a day off. One of the things that I, I, I hear in people talking about their life, their problems, and how it relates to weight loss is that when the going gets tough, when, when life gets extra super shitty, and you make that compromise and you say, you know, I don't care, I just need to feel good today, and tomorrow I'll do better. Number one, we, we all know that tomorrow kind of never comes and today lasts a really long time. And one of the things that we say to ourselves to, to justify is, um, well, it's just what I need to do right now. I'll never let myself get back up to 400 pounds or I'll never let myself get back up to 250 or whatever it is, whatever your biggest weight is. Well, let me tell you something. You gave yourself a crap storm of wiggle room. And how many times do you want to lose that one pound? Lose that same pound over and over and over and over again. Um, giving yourself that cop out right from the get go. How about if you make a smaller, I'll never get up to that weight. Let's say you get down to like I did, get down to 160, right? Instead of saying, I'll never let myself get back up to 200. Well, crap, that's 40 pounds of wiggle room. How about saying like, I'll never let myself get back up to 170, a 10 pound wiggle room. Like, that's it. You have to draw the line somewhere because that line, that's the thing that you're saying, I just won't cross. And if you set it way the fuck out there, that line that you'll never cross again, you set it way out there, you've given yourself so much space to fuck up and ruin your life. And, and let me tell you something, it's only easy to lose that pound the first time. The second time, it's twice as hard. And the third time, it's twice as hard as that. So how many times do you wanna lose that fucking pound? How much time and space do you wanna give yourself to fail? I say make a little tiny window. That's all the failure I'm allowed, 10 pounds, period. You have to, you have to draw a line and you have to draw it close or it gets out of hand really fast. Oh, and during all of this chaos and madness right around this time so you know losing my father-in-law having my house the dynamics in the house get completely blown up and having surgery i decide i'm gonna switch and my antidepressant and it basically left me with um zero tolerance for just about everything um i i had to really struggle um with the emotions that started coming up because on zoloft i kind of just didn't really give a shit too much you know i can handle everything just fine another thing that you're going to find yourself saying is i'm trying i'm i'm doing my best i'm trying and number one the truth is no you're fucking not and you know it okay i'm trying is a cop-out so let me ask you a question. So if I came at you with a baseball bat and started swinging it, and I said, I'm gonna try not to hit you, would you trust me? Would you trust the fact that 
I will or won't hit you? When I say I'm just gonna try? Or would you prefer that I say, I'm just not gonna do it? Don't worry, I'm not gonna hit you. You can trust me, I'm not gonna hit you. Well, that's the same thing with losing weight. Don't try, do it. You just have to do it. Anyways, you just need to understand the struggle is real and you will be struggling every day. You're gonna be dieting every day. You're gonna have to do the hard work every day. You're going to have to stop trying as much as you can and start doing, do it, just do it. Another thing that you're gonna have to come to terms with is the fact that you did this. You put yourself in this situation. I did this to myself. I'm the one who controls what goes on my plate. I'm the one who controls what goes in my mouth. No matter what the fuck my parents did to me to screw me up, okay? Once you're an adult and you have free will and there's nobody with a gun to your head anymore telling you what you can and can't eat, you did this. And so when you go off plan thinking uh, that you don't need to do what your doctor told you to do anymore, that you know better, that you know what's best for you, I'm here to remind you of this. You did it your way for a really long time and look where it got you. Stop trying to do it your way because your way didn't work. Stop trying to beat the system. Stop trying to fool the scale. If you knew better, you would have done better. If you're new to this, you might be, might be wondering what is life really like after surgery? I'm gonna tell you, it's not like you think it's gonna be. It's nothing like what I thought it was gonna be. And you're probably not gonna get the support that you think you're gonna get, that you deserve to get. Um, and you are more than likely gonna have at least one person who's going to try to sabotage you. Sadly, that person might be you. Um, the, the truth is, is that people um, are gonna have food all around you all the time. And it's still gonna suck after surgery. And if you can't figure out um, how to live with life's problems without eating your weight through it, You've got to ask yourself, can you handle things that are uncomfortable or painful? Because life is going to be uncomfortable after surgery and life is going to be painful. It is going to be painful to be at a party and watch other people eat and drink what you are not supposed to eat and drink. And you're going to feel tempted and you may or may not join in. Like I said, that one little compromise, it's just today, la, 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 la. You know, you gotta be prepared. Bring, you know, a shake with you or bring your own food with you, bring something with you because you've gotta figure out how to, to push through it without eating your way through it. Um, and you're gonna find yourself saying, it's just too hard, eh, that's an excuse. You're gonna find yourself saying, I'm really trying, eh, that's an excuse. Um, you're working on it, I'm working on it. Um, or it's not working, my surgery's not working, this diet isn't working, eh, that's just an excuse. That's an excuse that your body is putting through, your brain's putting you through, whatever you wanna call it, to give you permission to feed your addiction, which is food, whether or not you wanna believe it or not. Wait till shit hits the fan and you're gonna find out, oh, I really am an emotional eater. Um, if you don't already know that, um, there's a lot of people who think that they're not emotional eaters when they have surgery and afterwards find out, oh, fuck yeah, I am. Um, because as soon as shit gets a little bit uncomfortable, when shit gets a little bit painful, you start stuffing the food in by the mouthfuls, blah, 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 right? No one and nothing is going to do the hard work for you. They can't. Nothing can, no one can do the hard work for you. you you've got to figure out how to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and do the hard work. Whether it's learning how to uh, meal plan, how to meal prep, how to um, log your food, how to uh, just even keep track, at least on a weekly basis. 
you know, calories in, calories out, um, how much exercise, whatever. Taking care of your mental health, whether it's with a therapist, whether it's, there's lots of books out there actually um, for the journey after your weight loss surgery and how to have long-term success. You're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to learn how to cleanse your environment to the best of your ability um, to not have shit in your face. I fucking swear, my mom, she's had weight loss surgery too. And um, my husband's kids were here for a week. And what does she do? She brought home a container of store, store made uh, Rice Krispie treats and put it right in the middle of the kitchen. And I walked by it a few times, but shit. That was, I couldn't do it. And finally I was just like, get this fucking crap out of my face. Don't, if you're gonna bring it home, hide it. I don't wanna see it, I cannot see it. If I see it, I'm gonna eat it. I can only resist it for so long before I just mindlessly grab it. It's amazing how willpower can, if you can, if you can find it, and if it can work for you, how quickly it goes from 100% to zero. That fast. And the next thing you know, you're stuffing five Rice Krispie treats on your face. Like, what the fuck? Another part of the sabotaging is maybe not necessarily intentionally, but someone else in your life has problems. And you have a codependent relationship with them. Um, I'm not going to go into codependency in this video because that's way too much. Um, but basically, you need to quit worrying about other people and worry about you and stop waiting for someone else to worry about you. Because the sad truth is when you're in a codependent relationship with someone else, um, when you're holding on to someone else who is drowning, you are going to go down with them, period. Um, it, it's almost impossible not to, even with my son. And yes, I had a codependent relationship with my son and uh, my son's moving out today. He's not just staying at his girlfriend's parents' house. Um, and I gotta learn to be okay with it. It's killing me inside. And part of me wants to like stuff down the pain, um, but I know I only have one way of stuffing it down and that's with food. So I've gotta figure out how to let that out how to um, how to be okay with being sad, how to be okay with feeling that incredible gut-wrenching pain. Because I know I may never see or hear from him again. But at the same time, I could not let that relationship hold the rest of this house hostage. It's not fair to anybody else in this house to be held hostage by their very toxic relationship. And it was causing me to be someone that I don't want to be and I, it's, it's almost mind boggling how you can get sucked into very slowly into something that you, you don't even know how the hell it happened. And then one day you look at yourself and you're like, how is it that I am acting like a 13 year old girl when I'm a 50 year old woman? Like, how did that happen? And that's because I was having to deal with people who emotionally are 13, even though they're grown ass adults. Um, and they behave and fight. And I don't understand, what did I do wrong? Waking everybody up at three o'clock in the morning with your fight, how about that? Scaring other children in the house, how about that? You don't fucking know what you did wrong? And then when I tell you to, to grow up and act like an adult or get, you know, take the fucking shit somewhere else, then I'm the bad guy? keep that in mind because that's exactly how that shit goes. That's how codependency goes. You give and give and give and give and give and the one day you say no, they fucking pull the rug out from underneath you and go, oh, tell me no. Watch what I do to you. 
Doesn't matter how much you gave him. Doesn't matter how much you loved him. Didn't, doesn't matter how much you gave up for yourself to provide for them. They will cut your ass off. The truth is, when you're holding on to someone who's drowning, you're gonna go down with them and vice versa. If you're the one that's drowning and someone's holding on to you, they're gonna go down with you, just like I went down with my son. And just because you have surgery doesn't mean that you're not gonna spend the rest of your life having to make the hard choices staring at your plate. And exercise is great and everybody ought to do it, but the truth is, that's not what helps you lose weight. It helps a little bit, but that's not, you cannot outrun your plate. You can't out-exercise what you put in your mouth. It's plain and simple. And you've got to figure out a way to get through it without killing yourself slowly one bite at a time. I don't remember what made me think about this in the first place, but I started thinking about the difference between, you know, bitches and non-bitches. Like, about people being sincere. And like, I always worried, you know, that people were, were gonna think I was a bitch. And I did not want to be labeled the bitch. And I've spent my whole life trying not to be the bitch, right? But the truth is, the bitch, she's honest. Um, I don't mean evil bitches. I just mean people that, you know, they say no and stay on their ground and don't put up with other people's shit, right? Um, but I started wondering, like, what exactly does a bitch look like? And what is the definition of a bitch, right? Because sometimes the nicest people are really bitches in sheep's clothing. And sometimes the meanest looking people with those resting bitch faces, right, are the most sincerely nice people. And when a bitch is nice to you, it's sincere. They could just as easily fucking shank you in the neck and then toss back a pint of Ben and Jerry's and think nothing of it. So when a bitch says she likes you, you can take that compliment to the bank and it's gonna earn interest and it's gonna earn compound interest daily. But, but that fake ass nice girl who brings you cookies and cupcakes for no reason, her, she's fucking your husband and plotting to kill you, okay? You just think about that. I'm not saying every nice person is bad and I'm not saying every bitch is nice because I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, sometimes we call people who are um, authentic and who are sincere and actually say the truth. I mean, think about it. I fucking lie to my husband all the time. Not about big shit, but just about, you know, I hide my feelings or if I'm sad or mad or whatever. That's a fucking lie. How is he going to get to know who I really am? And, like, think about someone that, you know, when you say to yourself, what the fuck are they thinking? and they're nice to you or whatever, like my son right now. He's not being a dick right now. He's being real calm, cool, and collected. And that's not like him. And so it's making me wonder what he's thinking. But I don't give a shit, because I ain't fucking caving to that. No way. And I'm not gonna let him see this, that it's killing me. I mean, he knows I love him and I'm telling him that. But what I'm saying is I'm not gonna let him think that if he's bluffing with all of this, no. He wants to hurt me. He's made that really clear. Some of the shit that they've said to me in the last couple of days. It's like, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to leave you with this one thing. Like, examine what other people are doing. And when you're like, that's not, they shouldn't be doing that. They shouldn't be eating that. They shouldn't, you know, they should be following the diet. They should be, in your early days after the surgery, that's going to, you're going to be like really uh, sanctimonious. Um, but what I really want you to do is really examine what people, the people who fail, the people who have their surgery fail them when in fact they're failing the surgery. Um, look at what they're doing and realize this. Here's the one thing I'm gonna leave you with. The early bird may get the worm, but it's the second mouse that gets the cheese. You absolutely can learn from someone else's mistake. 
So I hope for you that uh, my videos have helped um, and I'm sure other people's videos will help too. So I, I personally, I don't like to watch videos of people, you know, talking about completely how great shit is after weight loss surgery, like it's all cupcakes and rainbows, cause it ain't, it's anything but that. And so I think that's what, why the people who do like me, why they like, like I'm gonna keep it real and I'll put some sugar on it so it goes down a little nice, but you know, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that this is gonna be a walk in the park for the rest of your life, because it's not. So, mm, may all your dreams come true. Thank you.